of the board and the public here and, and those that are watching. Um, I'd like to begin tonight with our Valor Award recipients. This is a, an annual exercise uh, that we go through. The five of you were at the Greater Richmond Convention Center last month to show the respect and the tributes that were awarded to the region's uh, Valor Award recipients. And we feel as though it's always good to bring those that were from Chesterfield uh, back before the Board of Supervisors and, and show that recognition and our support for public safety in general. Uh, so I'd like to introduce Jenna Mosman, who's the executive director for the 100 Club RVA. They are the uh, nonprofit entity that oversees the Valor Awards program and takes the many applications uh, to determine who is the uh, gold, silver, and so forth winners of the program. But they would also say in the first person that the, the people who get the awards are just representative of the many who work 24-7. So Ms. Mosman. Yeah, right here. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'd like to just say a little bit about the 100 Club RVA. It is a nonprofit uh, that is under the umbrella of the Retail Merchants Association. And we've been in existence since 1988. And our sole purpose is to support the first responders of the greater Richmond area. So we do that by giving grants. Last year in 2022, we gave out over $39,000 worth of grants, uh, including grants for the funeral of um, a fallen Chesterfield firefighter. So we are an active part of supporting your community and we appreciate all the, that your, the men and women uh, who work for your uh, first responding agencies do for us. In addition to supporting uh, those agencies through grants, we also have the Valor Awards, as uh, Dr. Casey mentioned. They're an annual event, um, and they are held at the Convention Center, and they recognize actions of men and women in first responder fields, so whether that's police, sheriff, firefighters, emergency medical services, that have gone above and beyond in what is already a very difficult and challenging occupation. This past year, we had 22 nominees from 11 different local departments in the, in the Richmond region. Three of those honorees were from Chesterfield. Uh, the first one that I'd like to talk about is P P Officer First Class Michael Dean. I believe he's in the back there. Yeah, they all can come to state. You want to come forward, Michael? Or? <laughs> no. He probably doesn't. These, yeah, these, I've, I've learned there, these men and women are very humble. You. On January 16, 2022, an estranged couple attempted to conduct a child custody exchange in the parking lot of the county's Appomattox police station. A confrontation ensued between the child's father and the mother's boyfriend. All of a sudden, a bullet struck the father in the chest. Officer First Class Michael Dean heard the gunshot while in his nearby patrol car. He radioed shots fired in front of the station. He then spotted the two adult males and one adult female near the vehicles. He immediately challenged the trio, advising them to keep their hands up and not to move. He noticed one of the men stumbling backwards with signs of trauma. Because this was a Sunday evening, few police personnel were at the station. Dean was alone. As the victim fell to the ground, Dean was forced to split his focus between the injured man and the couple. He quickly realized the other male as a threat and ordered him to get on the ground. As Dean detained the suspect, he notified emergency communications to expedite emergency medical services. Other officers arrived. With their assistance, the handgun used to shoot the victim was recovered from the suspect's waistband. Despite the life-saving efforts of the officers and the rescue personnel, the victim died at the scene. Officer Dean's immediate action resulted in the arrest of a murder suspect. Had Dean not acted so quickly with little regard for his own safety, the suspect may have fled. For his calm, selfless, and quick-thinking courageous action, Officer First Class Michael Dean was awarded a Bronze Valor Award. Thank you so much. Say 
you asked if he wanted to say something, you knew he was going to say no. I know, I know. They're so <laughs> humble. They really are. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, thank you. as always. Thank you. Uh, and then I'd like to invite Deputies Tayon Wilson and Dante Govine to come down. Late in the evening on Saturday, July 2nd, 2022, a birthday party with several hundred invited guests was held at the Cultural Center of India. Deputies Dante Govine and Tayon Wilson were providing security at what should have been a joyous and peaceful celebration. Without warning, gunshots rang out in the building. Deputies Govine and Wilson ran toward the gunfire and were met by guests who said the shooter was in the men's restroom. There, a confrontation among teenagers resulted in a shooting. The deputies found a 16-year-old male with gunshot wounds in the chest. Wilson and Govine notified Chesterfield Emergency Communications Center and started life-saving measures. Wilson administered CPR, but as it turned out, the teen had died instantly. Within seconds, the deputies heard another round of gunfire, this time coming from outside. They ran toward the gunfire at personal risk. They encountered a man recklessly firing a gun. They drew their weapons and repeated clear, concise commands to drop the gun. The suspect did not comply, and within seconds, he pointed the gun at Govine, who fired one round and struck the suspect in his abdomen. While Wilson secured the suspect, Govine retrieved the weapon, taking out the magazine and placing it in his pocket. Believing the situation was now under control, Wilson ran back to the initial victim to resume life-saving measures. Govine attended to the suspect and began to move him toward his sheriff's vehicle. Govine was physically assaulted and pushed several times while maintaining his hold on the suspect. Despite an overwhelming number of people and several attempts to interfere with him, Govine was able to get the suspect to his car. In the end, an investigation revealed the person Deputy Govine shot was not one of the killers, but someone acting recklessly with a gun. Having an active shooter at a developing homicide scene shows just how chaotic the evening was for everyone involved. The quick actions of Deputy Govine and Deputy Wilson undoubtedly saved others' lives. For confronting a dangerous, chaotic situation at great personal risk, while demonstrating bravery and courage, Deputy Tayon T. Wilson and Deputy Dante C. Govine were awarded Silver Valor Awards. These are just three examples of the men and women who serve this community with pride and humbleness and uh, to whom we are very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, board members, any comments? It's everybody. Go ahead, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Engel. You had your line on first. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, just hearing these stories is amazing. And unfortunately, there's many more that we didn't hear tonight. I just want to thank all of our public safety, our police department, our fire department, and our sheriff's department for what they do to keep our citizens safe um, in this community. And I'd like to um, especially commend our police, uh, our police department at this time on the um, thoroughness of their investigations and um, the consistency at which they investigate all criminal activity and for the um, amount of cases that they're able to um, bring charges on, it's amazing. Um, some of the uh, ratios of cases that are solved in Chesterfield versus other uh, localities. And um, again, I just wanna, I wanna thank all of our um, public safety, but I especially wanna um, thank police department tonight for their, their great work. Thank you. Mr. Holland. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank each of our Valor Award recipients. Thank you for your service to our community and to all public safety I see throughout the room. We are around the room. We are surrounded by you. So thank you all for all you do every day and for the difference you make. You do it so well. You do it with excellence. 
And we don't take that for granted. We applaud you because in some places in the world, you don't have what we have here. And so in some communities even, we've seen disasters throughout our country. But we take it for granted when we have such a great group of public servants who serve truly the public. And so we applaud you. We thank you. And we're so pleased that you are able to go back home to your families as well. Sometimes people don't realize that you have families to go to as well. And we thank you and we thank your families for allowing you to serve us. Thank you all and God bless each of you. Thank you, Mr. Holland. Mr. Winslow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, say congratulations to the award winners. Appreciate y'all, appreciate what you do and appreciate what you do every single hour of every single day. Someone's probably helping somebody out right now in the police department, right now. And somebody will be helping somebody out in an hour from now. And that's just the way this goes. Our sheriff's department, our police department, our fire department, and the interagency cooperation that exists right now is some of the strongest, maybe the strongest in the entire Commonwealth. I cannot be prouder personally of the work that is done each and every day because police officers have a tough job. They have to protect the constitutional rights of all citizens. So we do this with compassion, but we also protect the life and liberty and property of folks, and we try to do it in a responsible fashion. So I, uh, I just want to say thank you. Dr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When I was watching the Valor Awards a couple of months ago, maybe a month ago, there was a part of me that had an enormous amount of pride for there are folks being in the community that when we say help, which is said 911, I need help, that someone is on their way. The other side of it is, in a way, I kind of wish we never had the Valor Awards because in a way it meant that all of our police officers, our first responders, would never be in the situation in the first place. But yet that is reality of the kind of community we live in and accidents happen and people react and they don't have any control on how they react and therefore they are putting themselves and others into a situation that we wish they would never be in in the first place. But yet there are our first responders that are there to say, you need help, I'm on my way. And for that, I am intensely grateful. When my daughter in the middle of the night, living in an apartment, 23 years old, and someone's banging on the door, she knew, if I'm thinking it, I do it. I dial 911 and I ask for help. And so grateful that you all are there to answer that call. Thank you. Dr. Miller, um, all fantastic comments. Uh, to the Valor Award winners, um, spectacular work under very, very trying uh, circumstances. What people don't realize, the split-second decisions that you have to make based on the input that you're getting at the time to make the decision that you did. And in many cases, it can be information overload. Um, and for the outcome, Unfortunately, in one scenario that came out the way it did, and both scenarios came out the way it did, the only shining part about that is that no one else got hurt and you were able to stop that action from happening and moving forward in the community, And which is why, whether we have our officers working off-duty somewhere in, uh, as in that capacity or if we have one working on-duty in capacity, you never know what's going to happen. You never know. Uh, we are very fortunate in Chesterfield County to have a tremendous public safety team. It starts from leadership from the top up, from our fire chief, our police chief, and our sheriff. But they, they, they ensure that there's a quality in, in the policies and the training that goes in and the hiring of the people that we hire, which is why we get tremendous people doing this job for our community, which is why we have people who react the way they did. Now, I might be a little biased because I was one for a little while, for 32 years, but I will say that um, it starts, you know, with the, with the boots on the ground, the people that are out there, the men and women out doing the job, and sometimes it starts at our 911 center where our people who work in there have to take all the calls for service and deal with the stress as they come in and get them dispatched out so it can be taken care of. So, you know, uh, we are very fortunate in Chesterfield County, uh, and I commend all of our public safety. Um, and 
And I, I put our, and, and again, I'm a little biased because I worked there, but I put our criminal investigations team about any team in the United States of America by far. Our clearance rates, if you would have really drilled down and look at the numbers, our clearance rates on property crimes and serious crimes in Chester County are way above national averages, and that's because our people work hard and we have great tools to do it. So we're going to continue to support you, continue to do your great work. Uh, thank you very much. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate it, and I echo everything that's been said, and, and I've had the privilege, and many of you have as also visiting not just the, the executive leadership, but the various divisions and units uh, amongst all of those three agencies. And each one is skilled in its own right, and each one follows the standards of the profession. Each one gets recognized nationally. Uh, each one has a reputation uh, second to none. So it's not just three entities. There's probably 25 entities amongst those three that are serving in so many different ways. And, and I'm, I'm humbled to actually be part of that team.